Yo, GDR here in beautiful Jamaica with some more answers to your questions. Readers, I love these questions. They're so interesting to me. And you know what? I return to my own work only through your questions. I don't reread my own work, so to speak. I don't sit there and say, I'm going to read Shantaram. I, I don't. And the only way I return to that work and go back into that world is through your questions, because I'm so much focused on what I'm doing in this world now and in our future projects and the things we're doing. So thank you for taking me back there in this gentle way that I can dip in and dip out again with a, an answer to your questions. So the first question is about Lisa. I have a reader who likes Lisa very, very much, and I'm so glad you do because I do too, as a character. She's of course not a real person, as you pointed out. She's not a real person. But were there people in my life who were Lisa-like? And in your interpretation, in the way you see this, yes, a lot of people. I wasn't personally involved with them, but I saw people who had Lisa's characteristics, a kind of innocence, a kind of frank honesty that actually is emotional honesty rather than honesty about things that happen in the world and so on. And her own share of guts to say, I'm going to go in this direction, I'm going to break with my habit and not become a heroin addict again and so on. So, Yes, there were people who were Lisa-like in my life. I was never personally associated with them. I think if you're really interested in Lisa, into Lisa that much, check out the song Lisa Runaway. And if you like, when you read The Mountain Shadow, no spoiler alerts, but yes, you asked, is she in The Mountain Shadow? Lisa is in The Mountain Shadow, no spoiler alerts. Um, but the song too, on Love and Faith, on the album, Lisa Runaway, is about Lisa. And so when you read The Mountain Shadow, you'll understand that song, I think, and it's certain poignance that it has for the reference. But thank you for that question about Lisa. It's so nice to go back to her again and then come out. All right. The next question is about trancing, and it's moved from there to another piece of writing, which is the spiritual path. And someone has asked me, when you trance and go into a trance state, what does it mean? What does it feel like? I don't mean that I'm going into some kind of weird state where I'm, oh, I'm seeing angels and so on. It's not like that. It's usually tremendously brief. It's, and, and it's over, you only know you were in it when it stops. It's not like, oh, I, I'm now in this trance state. Isn't it fantastic? The trance state is an absence of your current level of awareness. So you're not even aware until it's over. You go, whoa, where was I? What happened? So it's, I think that sense of trance is what it means to me. What is the trance state that you dis discover you were in? For instance, for me, when you're blowing the conch shell, you're blowing it for as long as you can, you're trying to make it as resonant as you can, as pure as sound, but also to put everything you've got in it and focus your attention with a mantra or a thought, or whatever it is, but focus your attention and push and give everything you've got so there's nothing left inside when you finish that. You finish it and then get ready to do the next one, and so on. You may do, I find, you may do the first one, two, three blows of the conch, and, and when you get used to it, and you're good, sort of good at it, so to speak, because you satisfy yourself with how you blow the conch, you're blowing away. There will be a time when all that focus of mantra, using your, your uh, concentrating on your breathing, calculating how much breath you've, all that vanished, and you suddenly come out of that and realize, oh, whoa, what just happened? I was outside of this experience. I wasn't there anymore. I wasn't blowing the conch anymore. And in those moments of transcendence, something often will pop in to your mind, an insight, an inspiration, a thought, or something that you should be thinking about and didn't realize that you should have been, will pop in there. I don't think it's some giant revelation. I don't think it gives you any kind of, you know, super insight or super power or something. It's not like that. It's really the absence of your ego. It's like your ego just suddenly took a holiday and left the true, naked, innocent self there by itself. And that innocent self is only about experience and not about how do I experience it and who am I experiencing it? Me, me and me. Me left the room if you know what I mean. So that's the trance state for me. And I hope that makes some sense to you. And, and it's very brief. Uh, I don't think it's uh, endowed with any hu super huge significance for me or for you, but it's available to every single person in this world. All right. Blessings and love on that. Next questions from uh, the spiritual path, but also some questions from readers who are interested in philosophical questions and so on in the book Shantaram. So we'll get into that. All you Shantaram readers out there, big up and big respect. Blessings and love.